Maraba, my name is Megan and welcome to Wanderlust Voyages. We are here to tell you all about Morocco, from the culture to the cities to the cuisine. If you would like to learn more about Morocco, be sure to like this video and subscribe, hitting the notification bell so that you are always notified of our future videos. Today I want to address one of the questions that I've been getting a lot lately as a lot of requests are coming in now that people are getting ready to travel again. And that is, how much time should I plan to spend in Morocco? Well, there's no easy answer to that. <laughs> Ultimately, it comes down to what do you want to experience in Morocco? If you have only, say, five days, but you want to see Chef Chouan and Fez and Marrakesh and the Sahara, I'm very sorry to tell you that is not going to happen. <laughs> Morocco is very large. I mean, by US standards, it's not. But <laughs> a lot of people, I think, are deceived by looking at it on the map. They're like, oh, it looks like such a small country. I can get around all of it very easily. Well, yes, it is on the smaller side, but no, <laughs> it is very mountainous. Now, along the west coast, there is a highway system that goes from Tangier down to Rabat, Marrakesh, uh, Casablanca, Marrakesh, and Agadir. And this is very fast way to travel. It also goes over to Fez and Meknes. However, once you get off that, you are on local roads and <clears throat> more local highways. And you are traveling through the mountains. And that makes it a lot slower going. So I've addressed this before, but I will share it again. Traveling by car is really the best way to get around Morocco. I know there are some trains. I know there are some domestic flights, but they are not the ideal method. If you are traveling by train, you may have to change trains. You have to get to a train station. You can only go to those cities where the trains are uh, where the trains go, which is not everywhere. And you also have to abide by their schedule and you have to navigate all of that with all of your luggage. <clears throat> Domestic flights, almost all of them go to Casablanca. <laughs> so if you are trying to get from Tangier down to Erechidia, which is the closest airport to the Sahara Desert, you're not gonna find a direct flight. You're gonna have to go through Casablanca and change train change planes and maybe change airlines to then get to Erechidia. And they're also not ideal at times. They are, you know, seven o'clock in the morning. Okay, so now you have to get up at four o'clock in the morning to get to the airport, to get to the, to get checked in and make your flight down there. And then you're at your next location at, you know, eight o'clock in the morning. What are you going to do at eight o'clock in the morning? <laughs> Everybody's it's still sleeping. The sites aren't open. Um, you know, you can't check into your hotel. So it's really not the best method. So we always recommend that people get a driver. Yes, it is long drives, but that's, that's just how it is in Morocco. And also that's where you're going to see some of the more interesting parts of the country, the small towns that don't have a lot to offer in terms of sightseeing, but are absolutely worth seeing as you pass through. And what is life like for all of the Moroccans who don't live in these major cities? It is a vastly different world. So it's fascinating to see. I mean, even, you know, if you, as you're driving from the Sahara, to say Boumlindaris or coming in that way, you know, it's like, oh, hey, there's camels on the road. <laughs> Watch out for them. Or we've even had the experience of, yep, there's sheep crossing the road. We need to hold on, break for them. You know, you, you think about that in Ireland. You don't really think about that in Morocco, but there are so many nomads who have herds of sheep who are doing that. So you, you gotta watch out for the sheep. Um, one time we, we even, so we were in Tangier, I think we we're trying to get to Chef Chouan and we were at this little, you know, traffic circle and we had to stop because there were two cows duking it out 
on the road and we're like, okay, do, do we need to back up? Are they, are they coming this way? <laughs> Cause they were like literally locked horns fighting in the middle of the road. So those are the interesting little side adventures that you have when you are exploring a city by vehicle. Now, keep in mind saying that you should get around by vehicle. I do not mean you should drive yourself. That is going to be an exercise in frustration and is definitely going to diminish your enjoyment of the trip, I'm afraid. <laughs> so traveling in, driving in Morocco is definitely different than driving in the US or Canada. It is a lot more chaotic and they don't always follow the same rules of the road. You know, the first time I was a passenger there, I'm like, oh my God, we're, we're going to get hit. How are there not an, how is there not an accident like every three seconds? But it's because they understand the flow of the road and they're anticipating people making these crazy moves. And so it works. But then you throw someone in there who doesn't know how that goes and they're hesitating a bit too long when someone is expecting them to go and now there's an accident. So you don't want to be that person who's causing problems for everybody else. Um, we, have, we have been there. So usually when we are traveling on highways, there's almost no accidents, nothing going on. We were there a couple summers ago and there were a lot of people who bring their cars over on the ferry from Tarifa or uh, Algeciras. So there were a lot of Europeans, a lot of even Moroccans who live in Europe. And so they're not used to the Moroccan way of driving. And you have a lot of people who are not local who are driving there. And it took us an hour and a half longer to get there because there were like three or four different accidents on the highway because people didn't know what they were doing. <laughs> so please, please, please do not try to drive yourself all over Morocco. It is a recipe for disaster. Um, GPS cannot always be trusted. You don't necessarily know where to park. Uh, you don't necessarily know what this road is taking you down. <laughs> um, you know, it's like, great, go this way. No, I'm now off-roading and this is not actually a road. So now I need to figure out another way. Or it takes you down something that's like, oh, wait, no, 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 no. This is not for cars. This is now too narrow to get the car down and I'm going to have to back out and find another way. Or it keeps insisting, go this way, go this way. Well, this is a one-way street. You, you can't do that. And when you're trying to deal with that in the midst of all this chaotic driving, it, it's a headache. And it's much better to have a driver who can <clears throat> take you directly to where you need to go. You don't need to worry about where's the parking, how much it's going to cost. Oh, hey, I forgot to tip this person. And thinking about like, okay, is it going to be safe? Is it not? All of those worries are taken care of if you have a driver. Also, having a private driver is going to greatly increase your enjoyment, not only by taking stress off, but because they are a local. Your driver is going to be able to share a lot of information about the country. You know, he's from there. <laughs> and if you are going to say, if he's from the desert and you're going to the desert, then great. He's going to have some insights that not everybody else is going to get to do. You know, if you, especially if you are friendly with your driver, and they're going to share a lot more. A lot of them will invite someone in for a meal with their family and to see, you know, what, what a real Moroccan home looks like. And it's an amazing experience. So absolutely have a driver, be prepared for some long drives, but it's going to be worth it. It is a gorgeous scenery. It's ever changing depending on where you are in the country. You know, you have the lush mountains up by Chef Shawan. You have the farmland, you have the desert and it's it's incredible so <laughs> all of that to say how long should you go to Morocco for it depends on what you want to experience if the Sahara Desert is a must for you then we recommend minimum absolute minimum eight days on the ground this does not mean your travel days to get to Morocco from the US usually you leave the night before you have an overnight flight, whether it is directly into Casablanca, whether it is into some European city where you're then going to transfer 
down to Casablanca or Marrakesh or Rabat. But that, that first day when you leave the US, that doesn't count as one of your days. You need eight days on the ground. This is because the journey through the Sahara is going to take two nights minimum, but ideally three nights, which is four days. This is, it sounds like a lot <laughs> to a lot of people, but it is so worth it. The Sahara Desert is such an incredible experience. And especially if you go to Merzuka, the Ergachebi Dunes, it's so hard to describe. I mean, it is what you see in the pictures, all of these huge sand dunes and you go out in the middle of it and it's all you see is sand and sky and these little shrubby bushes that manage to grow out in the desert. It's incredible. Some people say like, okay, great. I just want to do a quick trip down, just spend one night and keep going. Okay. Think about that for a moment. <laughs> You're going to make the journey down from Fez. We're talking about eight hours because you're going to need to stop. Even if you don't need to stop, your driver needs to stop. You need to be safe. And once you get down there, if it is in the cooler months, well, you're either racing the sunset or you're going to get there after dark. That's not when you want to then suddenly hop on a camel and go into the camp. So if you do that, then okay, well, <laughs> just sat in a car all day. Now I'm on a camel for 45 minutes to an hour and spend the night in the camp, get up and leave. And, and now you have a, a four to six hour drive ahead of you that day. And then another four to five hour drive after that. That's exhausting. So absolutely take the time, have two nights down in the Sahara Desert. The first night, you go to Merzuka and you stay in one of the Riyadhs. Now, a lot of people are like, well, no, 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 I want to be in the desert. Keep in mind, Merzuka is in the desert. You, you know, you look out the window and you see sand dunes. Some of the Riyadhs, you walk out the back door and you are walking into the sand dunes. One, a couple of them, it's like, okay, I, is there going to be a problem? Because the sand dune is encroaching on the Riyadh. Um, there's one private Riyadh that we know that it, it used to have this courtyard right in front of it, but now it now it's a sand dune in there. <laughs> it is in the desert. So don't be afraid to spend one night in the Riyadh. You're still going to be in the desert. You're still going to have that experience. It's just going to be a little bit more comfortable because you don't have to take a camel ride or another bumpy ride through the sands to get there after that long drive from Fez or Meknes. So you want to have the first night in the desert in the Riyadh. The second day, now you have a full day to explore the desert. You can do the ATV or dune buggy excursions. You can do a trek through the desert. You can visit nearby Risani and see that local market. It is a completely different experience from the markets of <coughs> Fez or Marrakesh or Aswara because this market is not half geared towards uh, the travelers and it's not someplace where like in Fez and Marrakesh there's a lot of people who live amidst the souks you know it's it's all part of the Medina they live you know, two doors down. And so it's this blend of markets and <coughs> homes and it's one cohesive community, but the market in Risani is not, it's, you know, it, it is separated and you're going to find all sorts of things as you go through, you know, you have the people who are selling the spices and cookies and olives and dates and, people who are selling rugs, but you also have people who are selling, you know, the cell phones and housewares and clothing and all of it is together, but it's, it's a very different feel. It, it's really hard, hard to explain, but you should absolutely go visit it. It is also a place where on market days, 
people bring their livestock. And so there's also the livestock market that you can visit if that is of interest to you. I know that not everybody wants to see that. Uh, personally, I'm, I'm okay with that <laughs> without seeing all of that, but some people are, find it very interesting. You'll find a lot of people who have their workshops there, you know, the blacksmith who's making farm tools or knives or large shears, uh, you, the woodworkers, people who are sewing the tents and just so many different things going on. It is well worth a visit. With having that full day, you can also go into the camp early and have some time to relax and enjoy where you are. Enjoy the fact that you are in the middle of the Sahara Desert. And then you can always take the camels back out to watch the sunset and then come back in. So having two nights down in the desert is absolutely recommended. From there, you're going to want to make the journey from the Sahara to Marrakesh in two days. This is because if you were to go straight through, you're talking an 11 to 12 hour day on the road. Nobody wants that. The driver doesn't want to do it. They don't want to put you through it. Nobody's going to be happy with it. <clears throat> some people do it because some people are, you know, they only have one week and they are going to make it work. Okay, we can make it work if you absolutely have to. But I'm not going to sugarcoat it. <laughs> this 12 hour day is not going to be an enjoyable highlight of your trip. <laughs> so, from the Sahara Desert to Marrakesh, there are two places that are usually an overnight along the way either Boumelindaris or Warzazet. Some people also go to Skura, which is a little bit uh, off to the side, but not very far. Um, it really depends on if there's a particular accommodation that you're interested in, but otherwise most people just want to be more on the road to Marrakesh. Boomlin Dottis is going to be a better place if you want to do some hiking. So the Todra Gorge and Dadas Gorge are absolutely beautiful. And a lot of people will hike in them, uh, rock climb, and hiking can be as gentle or as strenuous as you want. You know, hiking guides know the area inside and out. Absolutely take a guide. <laughs> you don't know the region, you don't necessarily know where's the safest place and also how, uh, like what lies ahead. So w one of our trips that, <laughs> that we took and we had uh, people who wanted to hike. So great, the guide went with them and this was great because he was actually the group guide as well. So he had been with these people for a few days. He kind of knew them and he had a very good idea of what their level was. And so he took them on a hike that was challenging, but you know, not, not too far. <laughs> he didn't push them too much. You know, one of the women who is, uh, only about five feet tall. Maybe she was just under. I think he did have to literally lift her up onto one of the, over one of the boulders just because it was, you know, that tall, but they all made it. They all had an amazing time, but it was also, they, they got an extra long hike. Like it was dark by the time they got back, but because he knew exactly where he was going, he knew the terrain he knew what was lying ahead. He knew what was safe to take them on. So absolutely take a guide. It's going to make your experience safer and more enjoyable. If you are not interested in hiking and you just want to get closer to Marrakesh, then you want to keep going and stay the night in Orzazet. Orzazet is known as Moroccan Hollywood because it has the Atlas Film Studios and Ait Ben Hadou and the, um, losing the name of it, uh, Kasbah Tahrirt and the Cinema Museum, all of which are used as filming locations. We actually, when we had a group of travel agents in 
towards us at one year when they were visiting the cinema museum there was actually an active shoot going on at the time <laughs> so they got some phenomenal pictures there's one of the big sets that's often used still used in the museum is this incredible throne room and so everyone wants a picture on the throne and so not only do people did everybody get their picture on the throne but they had like guards next to them and everything it was fantastic so if you are interested in that sort of thing absolutely stay the night in wars is it because then you'll have time the following day to explore these amazing sites if however you don't really care to see all of that, then you can just keep going. And from Warzazet to Marrakesh, we're down to about a four hour trip, which is fantastic. It used to be about five hours. <laughs> and the reason it takes so long, it's not very long distance wise, it's about 150 kilometers or so, but at least a hundred of them are almost back-to-back -back straight you know switchbacks over the mountains it is a lot to go through so it, it's a little bit slower going but they've been doing a lot of work on Tishka Pass and widening the road making it easier to drive so it's we're getting down there they're shooting for three hours or less drive time so however it's still a lot to do all in one day from the Sahara so we break it into two. So you can see why you need at least eight days if you want to go to the Sahara. Ideally, we do say 10 because this allows you to, first of all, when you arrive, spend the first night in Casablanca or Rabat. A lot of people from the US do arrive through the direct flight from JFK to Casablanca, which is a fantastic flight. It gets you in at nine or 10 in the morning and you have the whole day. So you're not losing an entire day to travel. If you're doing this, then you can also maybe continue on and go to the north, go to Tangier, Chef Shawan for that first night or over to Fez for that first night. However, it does make a really long day. So if you don't have to do that, it is very nice to spend that first night in Rabat or Casablanca. And if you are coming in on a different flight, let's say an Air France flight that gets in at three o'clock in the afternoon, okay, by the time you get out of the airport, it's gonna be at least four o'clock. And now add another hour to get to either Casablanca or Rabat, and now we're at five o'clock and it's dinner time and your day is done. So keep that in mind. If you're coming in in the afternoon, you need an extra day for everything. So if you want to go to the Sahara Desert, ideally 10 days, this will give you that time to spend the first night in Rabat to see Fez. Um, along the way, you can stop at Meknes or Vulibilis make the way down, spend your two nights down in the desert, one night on the way to Marrakesh, and then you have time to see Marrakesh. So we do recommend having a guide for at least your first half day. This will help you get your bearings as well as help protect you from all of the people offering to guide you, which really means, hey, let me take you to my shop. <laughs> or sure, I'll show you where that is and you better give me some money or I'm gonna leave you stuck in the middle of who knows where, not anywhere close to where you need to be. So definitely having a guide really helps on that first day. And it, this is something that even myself, like I, I don't really like going through the Medina on my own because it's constantly, hey lady, need a guide, need a guide? Hey, let me help you. And I'm just like, no, we're done. <laughs> Even trying to take a taxi, I had a, the concierge at the hotel arranged a taxi for me. He's like, okay, he was supposed to take me to La Sultana. Great, easy enough. I'd been there many times. I knew where it was once I was in the area. However, where he dropped me off, was completely not the right place <laughs> and I think it was he was mad because 
as a foreigner, he was going to charge me a lot more than what the concierge negotiated for me. So Marrakesh is, can be a little bit challenging and having someone help you that first day is amazing. However, Marrakesh has so much to offer and it's a wonderful place to spend time wandering through the Medina and just seeing what there is to see or visiting places like the Majrel Garden and Yves Saint Laurent Museum or spending time in a cafe and people watching or exploring the Hivernage or Gillies districts and there's also so many hammams all of the major hotels have hammams um, a lot of them allow outsiders to book them and there's also just other hammams that are standalone that you can go to it's a wonderful thing to experience especially after coming from the desert and kind of sloughing off all of that dust and dead skin and I'll go into the whole hammam thing in another video but having the extra time to do that is wonderful. Also, if you're staying at a nicer hotel, especially in the warmer months, you may want some time just to relax by the pool. So by having a 10 day journey, it allows you that time to have that free day in Marrakesh, which is absolutely incredible. Also, you may come up with other things that you may want to do. We've had people who as they talk to their guide or their driver along the road, they learn about, oh, hey, maybe I want to make the journey out to see if the goats are in the argon trees and get pictures of that. Or maybe I want to go up to Uzud and see that. And so as you talk to your driver, you, you may come up with other things you want to see that you didn't know you were interested in when you were initially planning it. So it gives you that freedom. If you want to see the Sahara, the Imperial Cities, and Chef Shawan, we really recommend 12 to 14 days. So I would say if you just want to tack on Chef Shawan or Aswara slash Agadir, you can do it in 12 days. If you want to see them both, then we're going to say 14 days because Chef Shawan is way up here in the reef mountains and from Rabat up to Chef Chouan is about five to six hour drive and then Chef Chouan down to Fez is about three and a half maybe four hours so it's a lot of hours out of the way and so you want to have at least one night there maybe two because if you are pretty much just driving the first day, you want a full day there, especially if you want to go to Aksha Falls and hike there. Another thing that a lot of people will do if they want to stay up there, but they want a nicer hotel, they can actually stay in Phnidic. So Phnidic is right on the Mediterranean. And so we have a couple of amazing beachfront resorts that we work with up there and so if you make the drive you can stay up there spend the afternoon on the beach and then it's just about an hour down to Chef Chouan so you can do a day trip down there and then go back and then when you go to Fez you can go back along the highway instead of through the mountains and it's gonna be about the same amount of time but there's a lot less uh, twisting, turning mountain roads. <laughs> so you have some options because Chef Shawan has really only become really popular in the last couple of years. So throughout its history, they have not had a huge need for accommodations for travelers especially high-end accommodations. <laughs> a lot of people who would go there would be more budget travelers, backpackers, people who just need a bed and a bathroom, and that's pretty much it. However, as it's become more popular, the couple of accommodations that are higher end, they book really quickly. There are exactly two five-star Riyadhs in the Medina, 
and one of them has 17 rooms the other has I think 10 so if you have a group good luck um, so you can see where if you are wanting those higher end accommodations having an alternative of staying up in Phoenix is going to be a better idea so if you want to as I mentioned go to Aswara or Agadir Tagazut then again you want to add a couple more nights for that now if you are going to that region first of all as you drive from Marrakesh you're going to find the goats in the argon trees most likely which is fantastic <laughs> there's interestingly it, it's one of those things that <clears throat> you do hear different things about about whether or not it's ethical whether or not it's real but I will share my knowledge of it which comes from seeing them talking to our drivers and guides who are in the area the goats absolutely they climb the argon trees they eat the argon fruits um, the fact that they happen to be right near the road where travelers are going by that is not accidental when there's gonna be a lot of travelers then yes you know one of the goat um, herders I guess will pick a tree and like make sure everything is well bolstered so that you can get more goats up there and you know they get the goats up there and they munch away and of course you know then they'll take them to another tree another day or later that day that has not already been picked clean of fruit so it is real but it is also encouraged in a certain way to make a great picture um you know you can walk up to the trees and you can see the goats in there they're not they're not tied to the tree they're not you know forced to <clears throat> be up there um at least from what i can see and what i have heard from our drivers and people you know who live there who who know these people of course again it is always polite to offer them a small tip you know 10 deer homes 20 deer homes something like that they don't make a lot of money off of this but it is helpful because a lot of the herders in general in Morocco don't make a lot of money so if you want to spend some time on the Atlantic Ocean depending on what you're looking for we will recommend either Tagazut or Aswara if you want to windsurf absolutely Aswara if you want to surf surf then Tagazut if you want more of the culture the Medina the history absolutely Aswara so Agadir, Agadir and Tazut are right next to each other. They're basically the same thing. So I'm gonna use those two kind of interchangeably. Agadir was leveled in the 1960s by a terrible devastating earthquake. There is almost nothing left of historic buildings. So the town, the city was really rebuilt with an eye to cater to tourists so it is very much a beach destination in fact it is to a lot of Europeans what Mexico and the Caribbean is to a lot of Americans you go there for an all-inclusive resort for time on the beach you're not going for the history the culture things like that most often so there are some amazing places in Agadir and Tarasut where you have private beaches they have all kinds of activities the horseback riding camel rides ATVs yoga um, all all sorts of things a lot of very family friendly um, all inclusives or where you can have include your lunch and dinner it's not not exactly all inclusive in the fact that you know you can't eat or drink whatever you want whenever you want but at least your meals are included um, and that's what you're gonna find in Agadir, Tagazut and so if you want that beach relaxation absolutely go there if you want the history the old Medinas then you want to go to Aswara Aswara used to be known as Mogador 
and it used to be one third Jewish. It was had a huge Jewish population before they all left and went to Israel. So if you are interested in Jewish history, absolutely include Aswara on your trip. Aswara is also well known as a filming location from Game of Thrones. Now, please forgive me, I've never seen <laughs> this show, so I'm vaguely aware of what I'm describing, but one of the battles where there's this rampart going out into the water, um, I think it was with the dragons involved, <laughs> was filmed down there, and you can walk along there, get the pictures and everything. Um, you know, they have a wonderful beach. It is a little bit windy in Aswara, so if you want to swim in the water, that's not necessarily going to be your best place to do it, but they still have a wonderful beach, and in the summer, it's wonderful for laying out. They also have, of course, a lot of fresh seafood because it is a very busy fishing port as well. So those are some of the cities and how much time I think that you should spend in Morocco if you really want to see everything. Now, seeing everything is also, <laughs> if you want to actually see everything, it's going to take you at least a month <laughs> because there's also places in the northeast of Morocco that we haven't even talked about. So up there, you know, if you keep going along the Mediterranean, you're going to come to El Hasima and Saidia and also Wejda. There's Wejda is another great option for seeing more of the lo local like true local cities where very few travelers go there and it's not exactly a rural town like you find along the way to the Sahara but it's it's not a city that half caters to foreigners they also have a train that goes from Warza, uh, Wejda down to the Sahara and not like a speed train but like an experience train. So that's another fun thing that you can do if you have the time. If you have more time, also spending time in Meknes is highly recommended. A lot of people, if they want more of a local experience, we do encourage them to stay in Meknes instead of Fez because it is less traveled and you are going to see more of a local city. The one caveat uh, about that, again, is if you are wanting higher end accommodations, you're not going to find that in Meknes. It's, it's a little bit of a vicious cycle. You know, <laughs> there, people don't go there because there's no high end accommodations. There's no high end accommodations because people don't go there. So just managing expectations on that. However, there are some incredible riads there as well. You know, they are going to be locally owned, they're going to be more authentic than some of the fancy riads that you find in Marrakesh. And Meknes is also a great place to mingle with the locals more. As the sun goes down, the square in front of Bab Mansour is completely full. People come hang out, mingle, you know, there's musicians and storytellers and you know the these little motorized car cars that kids that people rent for their kids to zoom around in um, they there's the stalls that press the cane juice and serve the snails and it's an incredible local experience Meknes also has two universities, and so, like any college town, <laughs> you're going to find a lot of young adults, and they get together, have fun, and it's also a wonderful place to do some shopping. If you had seen my other video on shopping, this is where you're not paying the foreigner price. You, you're paying the local price, and so if you're wanting to get you know, tuxedas, jellabas, other, other types of things that 
locals buy, you're going to get local prices. So absolutely, if you have time, spend some time in Meknes. You can also spend some time in Ifran. Usually as people are going from Fez down to Merzuga, Ifran is really just a coffee stop. It's in the Atlas Mountains and it has it, this incredible alpine architecture. <laughs> Not something that you usually see because usually in Morocco you see a lot of flat roofs because people take advantage of that. It's warm, it's sunny, let's use the rooftop for whatever, you know, living space or laundry space to dry your clothes, <clears throat> whatever it is that you want to do. However, in Ifran, it does snow. So the alpine architecture with the slanted roofs is a lot more common. And there's also a wonderful resort if you are looking for a high-end location called Mishlefin. They have a golf course and the largest spa in the country and cooking classes outside and a little petting farm for kids and it is gorgeous. So if you have a day or two and want to again have a little bit more of that relaxation then you can absolutely spend a night or two in Ifran and this will also then break up the trip down to the, the Sahara if you would like. Also if you have more time you can take the long route from Fez to Marrakesh if you don't want to go through the Sahara and go through the mountains. If you do that, we do recommend breaking it up with a night in Benimala. And that's because this journey is going to be 10, 11 hours if you do it all in one day. It's absolutely beautiful. So whereas up north along the Mediterranean, you're going through winding mountains that are kind of like Tishka Pass, but it's all very much the red rock and sometimes you have the ocean on one side but as you're going through the mountains through like Benimalal, it's very lush and green and some of it it really <laughs> does remind me of Ireland how green and beautiful and the rolling hills and so that's also another incredible experience if you want something different and unique and of course if you have extra time and want some more time on the beach then visiting other cities on the Atlantic like um, El Jadida would be an excellent choice as well. So El Jadida used to be a Portuguese city and uh, it used to be known as Mazagan and again it does have a lot of Jewish history there as well so that's often a stop when we have tours that are focused on Jewish history. So that's all the things you can see if you want to spend a long time in Morocco and see everything. But what if you only have a short time? So if you have seven days, you can easily do the Imperial cities. You would come into Casablanca most likely, go to Rabat, from Rabat over to Meknes, Fez, and here's where, unfortunately, you're probably going to have to do some backtracking. You'd go back from Fez, back over and down to Marrakesh. There is a flight between Fez and Marrakesh. Three days, right now it's two days. Usually it's three days a week. And sometimes it can change whether it is a 9 a.m., a... 1 p.m. or a 9 p.m. flight. So again, if you're trying to plan for next year, we don't know those flight times, and so that can be kind of iffy planning around. But the trip from Fez to Marrakesh going through Rabat is all highway. If you want to split it up and do an overnight in Rabat, maybe if you come in late, you spend the first night in Casablanca, then go straight to Meknes, Fez and then on the way back to an overnight in Rabat that will help break up. It's about four hours, four hours each way that way. 
Another thing you can do with just seven days is just around the Marrakesh region. So if you fly into Marrakesh, even better, or it's only about a two and a half hour drive down from the Casablanca airport. You can spend a couple of days in Marrakesh, you can do a day trip or overnight in the Atlas Mountains in Uzud or Imlil. You can go over to Aswara or Tarazut, Agadir, and you can easily spend seven days in that region. There's also the Agafe Desert, which is just 45 minutes outside of Marrakesh. The Agafe Desert is does offer the luxury camping in you know the middle of nowhere <laughs> and camel rides and ATVs. The one thing it does not have, however, is sand. The Agafe Desert is a rock desert. So if you are wanting to have the luxury camping experience, absolutely spend a night in the Agafe Desert. However, just manage your expectations. You're not going to see those sand dunes. If you only have five days, then again, just around the Marrakesh region or just around the Fez region would be a great way to spend that time. You can do both Fez and Marrakesh in five days, but it's going to be pretty fast paced. If you are maybe coming in from the north, you can also do five days around Tangier and Chefchaouen, maybe even squeezing in Fez if you are okay with being on the move a lot. If you have fewer than that, well, you're really looking at just one city. We would really recommend Marrakesh if you are just spending, say, three days because it does have the most to offer. That said, if you have, if you're planning on staying mostly in Marrakesh and you want to spend the night in the desert, we really do not recommend just one night in the desert because that means you're going to have to make that drive in one day, spend one night, and then make that drive again. Now, as I mentioned before, getting all the way to the Sahara, you're looking about 11 to 12 hours on the road. Sorry, getting all the way to Merzuga, you're looking at about 11 to 12 hours on the road. There is a place that's a little bit closer called Zagora which is just a couple out hours outside of Warzazet, so about six or seven hours from Marrakesh. It is a place where there are some sands from the Sahara that are there. Uh, there are mountains around it, so you're not, you don't have that isolated in the sands dune feel, and you're really not very far off the road, so it it again doesn't have that in the middle of nowhere feeling that you get in Eric Shebi. But it is the sands, it is the luxury camping, and so that would be another option. Another thing to keep in mind though, if you are making that journey just for one night, you're doing Tishka Pass twice. <laughs> if you get car sick, I would not recommend doing Tishka Pass two times in one trip. Do people do it? Absolutely. Do people go all the way to Merzuga for one night? Absolutely. Do we recommend it? No, we do not. <laughs> it is going to be much more enjoyable if you are spending less time on the road. Another thing, if you want to maybe go to Zagora and then go to Agadir or Tayazut, and then back up to Marrakesh. That's something you can do without doing Tishka Pass twice. There is still going to be a lot of winding mountain roads that are almost as bad as Tishka Pass, but it is not as long if you take that route. So that's another option if you have limited time and you want that desert camping experience. Some other things that people should be aware of is there's no such thing as a day trip to Chef Chouan from Marrakesh. Making that entire trip 
in one day, it's nine to 10 hours. So that's something that if you want to do Marrakesh and Chef Shawan, two nights in Chef Shawan, because having to go all the way up there, you again don't want to turn around and come all the way back the following day. That is going to be rough. Chef Shawan is a wonderful place to visit. It is beautiful, but in my personal and professional opinion, it is not worth adding on excessive amounts of driving just to get to. Yes, you can see the whole thing in a couple of hours and get those wonderful pictures, but if you are wanting to see everything and that's like in the south and you know if you don't want to go to Fez but you want to go to Chef Chouan, you are adding a, almost a full day 24 hours of travel to spend a couple of hours and I would recommend really uh, saving that for another time if you travel to Europe a lot you can get a flight into Tangier and then go to America or go to Chef Chouan from there. It's only a couple of hours. And so that's something that maybe you can make a little weekend getaway add on to another trip. Also, speaking of making a weekend add on from another trip, when we have people who have a limited amount of time and they want to see Fez and Marrakesh and the Sahara and something's got to give. <laughs> we we got to cut time in something. I do recommend cutting time in Marrakesh. That may sound counterintuitive when Marrakesh is the most popular place, but there is a logic to this. Because the journey to the Sahara is so long, most people don't make that journey more than once. Me having done it a dozen times is definitely an exception. The if you're going to make that journey, then you should make it worth it. You should make it enjoyable. With Marrakesh, because there are flights from so many major European cities, again, it is a very easy place where you can hop down and it's just a couple hours on a plane and the airport is very much right next to the city. It's, you know, maybe 20 minutes from the Medina. And so it's not like Casablanca where you are, you know, 45 minutes to an hour outside of the heart of the city. And so you can hop down there and spend the day exploring, seeing things that you didn't see before, or just enjoying some of the uh, incredible hotels, visiting the wonderful restaurants. And it's a place where you can easily go back and spend time on your own. You don't need a driver to get around there. You don't need to worry about, you know, all of the sightseeing if you've already done that. Now it's just, okay, here's your free time in the city. So if you have to cut time from anywhere, I actually do recommend it for Marrakesh if there's any chance that you are going to be able to come back because Marrakesh can be a kind of standalone destination. Fez is very difficult to see on your own. The first time I went to Fez, <laughs> I hated it. I didn't understand why anybody would want to go there. It was boring. It was crowded. It was hard to find anything. And that's because I didn't have a guide. <clears throat> Without a guide, that incredible community of the Medina is a complete mystery. It, it's a crowd. It's all gray walls and you can't find anything and everything looks the same. And there's why is there like 20 of the same shop right in a row? But when you have a guide who's able to direct you <laughs> so you don't get lost and explain to you about all of that, why does it all look the same? What is unique about these different parts, it suddenly comes to life in a way that you don't get when you're on your own. So it's worth it to spend the day with a the guide there. In Marrakesh, 
have fun. <laughs> it is an incredible place. And as long as you know what to expect, as long as you know that, okay, there's going to be people who are offering to guide you that you really shouldn't, should just say, la, shukran, keep going, don't make eye contact and go on your way. You will have a wonderful time in the city. So I hope that helps you out with some understanding of what there is to see in Meknes and how much time you should plan for different locations and how much time you need kind of overall to see what it is you want to see. I'm going to leave a link to some of our sample itineraries in the description box below so you can see a little bit more structured way of how you can spend your time there. And I hope you'll join us next time. I'm going to be doing a cooking video next about how to make misamin. If you've ever had it, it is absolutely one of the best things. So come join me to see how to make it. Be sure to like and subscribe so you know when that video comes up. And I will see you next time. Mm -hmm.